at a city-run psychiatric hospital emergency room in Brooklyn capture a woman falling from a chair, writhing on the floor, and dying. Hospital staff and other patients watch and do nothing for more than an hour. One guard doesn't even leave his chair, rolling it around the corner to stare at the body. The city's medical examiner has yet to determine why the woman, 49-year-old Esmond Green, died on June 20th. She had been waiting in the emergency room for nearly 24 hours. The video eventually shows a member of the medical staff attending to Green. But it's too late. She has already died. November 22nd, 1998, was a typical night for Bill and Annette Weiss. They spent the evening with friends, then came home and went to bed around midnight. About three hours later, Bill felt himself lifted from his bed and hurled through the air. He landed on the hard floor of a prison cell. We went to a prayer meeting, came home like any other normal night. Yeah. And I got up at three o'clock in the morning to get a glass of water. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I was pulled out of my body, like being sucked out of your body. And I found myself falling through the air and I landed in this actual prison cell in hell. Rough hewn stone walls, bars, a filthy, stinking, dirty prison, like a dungeon. Yeah. Now, this was an out of body experience. This was okay. a, a vision, okay? Right. 
Uh, I've never had one like this before. But anyway, it was actually a prison cell. And uh, there were these demonic creatures in this cell. What were they like? Reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over their bodies. Yeah. Uh, these particular two were about 12 or 13 feet tall. There's even scripture for that, but... Um, Did they look like anything that you've ever seen a picture of? Yes. <clears throat> they had, they, there are some depictions that are pretty accurate. Uh, one was in uh, Dr. Kenneth Hagen's testimony that uh, John Osteen's church showed about a demon that he saw. Dr. Kenneth Hagen. What did they do to you? Or did they do anything? They were, first of all, they were blaspheming and cursing God. They had an extreme hatred for God. All right. They were deformed, twisted, grotesque creatures. And then they directed that hatred towards me. And I wondered, why? What have I done to them? But the one picked me up, threw me into the wall. Tremendous strength. I collapsed on the floor. I felt bones broken. Mm -hmm. The other one dug his claws into my chest, tore the flesh open. You have a body in hell, but it can withstand this torment. And uh, they had absolutely no mercy, an extreme hatred for God and for man. No mercy at all. None. No. Not any. I just greet you in the name of Jesus. I would like to give you a Bible scripture concerning hell. It's in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19. It talks about a rich man in Lazarus. And Christ was teaching about hell in this subject. And when Christ reveals hell to someone, the Bible always backs it up. So later on, you can read St. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to the very end of the chapter. And it tells you about a rich man in hell. It tells you how you can see in hell, how you can talk in hell, and how you remember your family while you're burning in hell. It's, it's really sad because when Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was told by prophets and apostles, my calling. He said, the day will come that you will go around the world and tell what I'm going to show you. And he said, I'm going to take you on a journey into the middle of the earth where hell is. And there I shall show you the abode of the dead. He said, there's levels, degrees of fire for the punishment of the sins of the flesh. And he said, what you're going to see will always be with you, but then I will give you a just balance. I will show you heaven. I will take you to hell three hours a night and for 30 nights. And then I will take you to heaven for 10, hour, 10 times, three hours a night. And I will show you the abode of the dead in hell and the glories of God about heaven. And this is what your purpose and your destiny for your calling is dreams, visions, and revelation. And what I've learned but going and telling this story is, is that people don't know. People don't have knowledge about eternity without God. And this is what's been hidden from ages to our generation. That people do not understand what it is to die. Your soul come out of your body. And if you're ready to meet the Lord, you're saved and born again. Angels convey you to heaven and you go there. And there you get a brand new body. If you're 80 or 90, when you get into heavenly atmosphere, you look 28 years old. There's no law of death in heaven. But when you go to hell, your soul comes out of your body and you're taken by demons into the part of hell that you did the most wickedness on the earth. And this is what Christ told me and this is what Christ showed me. And then I learned from the Lord as we walked among the dead and they talked to him. Uh, I learned there was a place called the abyss, which is I've read in the Bible. And the Lord told me the abyss was worse than where we were walking. Because demons would come up ever so many holes and they would beat them with uh, kind of clubs and stab them. And then more fire would come on them. And they would cry and st say, stop, stop. And they seemed to me like they were reaping the sins of their flesh on the earth. And the Lord knew my thoughts. He said, this is exactly what's happening. He said, child, this is the torment for adulteresses and fornicators and some backside ministers. And he said, we're going to go through the left leg and then we're going to go through the belly. And he, then he said, we're going to go through the jaws and one of the arms of hell. And he said, there's demons all through here, but because of me and my power, I protect you. It's what he told me. Brian Melvin died after being infected with cholera from drinking water. He describes how his soul was separated from his body and taken to hell. 
While in hell, his demon guide showed him miles of cubes, most of them containing the souls of people suffering their own personal hell for their deeds during their life on earth. And as we were walking along, um, I realized that hell is just an enormous big place and there's many other parts to hell that I did not see. I just saw this place called the pit. And so it says, it's been granted to thee, follow me out to the middle of the road. So we walked out in the middle of the road and all these demons and creatures running around and I saw all these people in various stages of torment. And some of these demons and creatures inside these cubes were going in at will. And they would be attacking people in various ways. But to the people, they look like other people or times in their lives or they look like demons. Whatever their worst nightmare was is basically what they were living. We walked along to another cube, we looked inside of another individual that was there, and it reminded me of a, an old sailing ship. And um, this guy used to be a captain of the ship, and he was being flogged. It's things that he did on this old sailing ship, but he did, it, he did it for pleasure for these people because it was his ship, and he liked to be mean to his, his crew, and it was being met it back to him. I noticed this, this being, this creature looking at me, it was in, in a cube at first, and the person who was looking at this particular this creature, it was one of those tall creatures with the round, with the faces that were going around, but it was of a beautiful purplish color, and in a way, kind of a beautiful creature, but hideous at the same time. And with its faces revolving around, very seductive, very, very flattering, very, very persuasive. It would try to plant thoughts in your mind, trying to tell you, why would such a good God allow people to suffer like this? It was trying to get me to curse God. I really don't know who the demon creature was. I know he had great power and authority. He either was the second in command or he could have been Satan himself. His one vortex was spinning and a lady that would just died in a car wreck came through and she was deposited right there. And I saw her as she arrived, and inside her cube, she saw it as the illusion of her grandmother's farm, that her grandparents' farm that she loved so well as when she was growing up. And her grandmother recently passed away too, so she got in this, this cube, and immediately she thought she was in heaven because there was her grandmother waiting there, welcoming her. The grandmother that was actually a demon that gave the illusion of being the grandmother said, Dear Pudding, you made it to heaven. I'm so glad you're here. And she really thought that she was in paradise. But there was a darker side to her. She would make her children be what she want. Her children wanted something else. She wanted them to be this. And if they didn't do it her way, it was the fist. It was verbal abuse. It was cutting down. So, as she sat down, I was watching it, and the tree's limbs just grabbed her. And then she realized she was not in paradise. And as we passed some cubes, there were people inside, and they were trapped in flames. And it was like their skin was still intact, but they were burning. What about the lake of fire thing? Were you, was there fire somewhere? Yes, I was taken out of the cell and I was placed over next to this large raging pit of fire. Mm -hmm. This pit was not the lake of fire talked about in Revelation 2013 through 15, but it's the current hell, Sheol. And those, this pit was just a huge cat, uh, hole in the ground with flames raging high up in this open cavern. And again, it wasn't metaphorical or allegorical, real literal flames. And Pat, this is where I could first see people. There were people literally inside this pit burning. It's the most awful sight to see a person on fire, burning, screaming. The screams were so loud from just millions of people at the top of their lungs screaming. What are they saying? Nothing. They, you just can't screaming. say anything. You're, You're just agony. screaming in agony. There's no conversation. You don't get to be with people. You're kept isolated and apart. And the, the demons are tormenting people. Uh, you, you have no conversation, the, the smells are so foul and putrid, the most disgusting odors, and you're actually breathing in sulfur, and uh, mm -hmm. sulfur that's burning is actually toxic. You know, you'd think that they would uh, expire, that they would die, but apparently they can't die. The body you're equipped with in hell, it, you live forever, because you know, we're made eternal beings yes. in God's image, and so our soul is eternal. It won't die. You know, like the burning bush, remember? Mm -hmm. You saw it burning and it didn't, wasn't consumed. That's something like what it's like in hell with your body. It can withstand these torments. 
and you want to die. I wanted to die, but you can't die. I understood that I'll never get out, uh -huh. never. And to know you'll be there for all eternity without hope. You know, Isaiah 38, 18 says, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. You have no hope for Jesus because it's too late for them. The decision's final. And that's really the worst part, knowing you're not ever gonna get out. It's the most horrible thing. People's minds can't even imagine the horrors of hell. Your mind can't even go there. Any one of these things would kill you. And, and the darkness, I only could see a little bit through the flames, but the darkness is, just consumes any of the light from the flames it is so dark that you can actually feel the darkness. Exodus 10, 21 talks about a darkness that may be felt. Yeah. So that's not an exaggeration because there's so much evil and wickedness in this place. There's no love of any kind. You understand you're never going to get rescued. There's no angels to protect you. There's no one to talk to. You're not going to get out of this place. No one to talk to. There's no, no fellowship. None. You know, none. You're not going to get out. You're not going to People think there's going to be a lot of their buddies in hell. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't work that way. so high up there was the world far below no bigger than a basketball and then out of the earth came these round brown things that looked like tornadoes these were like turning real slow and back again and I said Lord what are those he said those are, are gateways into hell he said we shall go down a gateway and he said to me, he said, child, look at my left hand. And he had a ring of keys. These keys, he said, are of death and hell. I can go down here anytime I choose. Jesus was about six foot four, very broad shouldered. He was not skinny at all. He had sandals on his feet. Jesus had a beard and a mustache. And his hair was a most beautiful color and it was down to his shoulders. And he had blue eyes. And when you look at his eyes, it's like eternity. There's no end to his eyes. And it's like he knows your beginning and your end without saying a word. And the peace that flows from Jesus is beyond any writer's description. And he said to me, ahead of you is great horror, great sorrow, and great grief. He said, but I must show you these things that the world can understand about a place called hell. So we went down this gateway. And when we went down the gateway, inside the walls of this gateway was uh, demon powers. And when I say demon powers, I gotta explain it to you, okay? There was some of them 12 foot high that looked like cockroaches. Some of them looked like huge spiders, 12 foot high. Then there was these creatures with fangs, with wings, uh, with bodies four foot across or five foot, 12 foot high, and evil fangs, just like some of the pictures you see of them drawing demon powers. But they could not touch us because of the power of Christ. And you could hear them growl at us as we went down. And later on, I wrote a book with George Bloomer on deliverance. He explains what the cockroaches were and the spiders, which I didn't have the knowledge of then, because this was in 1976, God showed me these things. So I began to know and understand as we descended down this thing to hell, hell is real. And before, you know, I didn't really, really as growing up in church, I heard hell preach, but the preachers just scared me to death. They would, you know, every Sunday we get saved. 
because we didn't want to go to hell. But when I began to hear the sounds of the dead in hell, and we began to walk among uh, certain areas when we were down, we went to the left leg of hell first. He said, hell has a body in the middle of the earth. And he said, we will walk through these chambers. And he said, I'll not show you all of hell, but part of hell. And here's what he told me. He said, there's some parts of hell, child, I will not show you. It is too gross, too bad. And as I began to walk with him, I began to, we came down this corridor. We went to the left leg of hell first. And in the left leg were pits of fire everywhere. As far as I could see were thousands and thousands of pits full of fire, but in every pit was a skeleton full of dead men's bones. They would be no flesh, no blood, no organs, and they could talk, they could turn, they were a skeleton. But some of them had arms missing, some of them had legs missing, and they could actually talk to you. They had a vapor of smoke inside their skeleton. And as you looked at their bones, there would be a corrupt substance, like hanging, burning flesh, and worms crawling through that. And they could feel the worms, and they would scream and pull the worms out. And they began to talk to Jesus as we walked. And they said, Lord, we've been here many years, and we cannot die. We burn and no one cares. We cry and no one cares. He said, no man cares for our souls. And Christ would look at them and cry. And he was in the human form and he said, I sent preachers to you. I told you myself, you must be born again to spare you from this place. He said, I've done everything in my power to, to have you turn unto me, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I shed my blood my blood on, on a cross for you. So that if you would repent of your sins, you wouldn't come to this place. And I watched as the, the corpses began to cry, no tears came. And I began to watch them reach up their bony hands and pray and it would really tear you apart because you would think, what if that'd been me when I was in sin, you know? What if that would be my neighbor? So your heart begins to change, you begin to think more about reality. You begin to think about eternity without God. And you begin to know that there is a real place called the abode of the dead, and it's Hades. It's a weird feeling to watch your kids playing and your wife, and you know in your head, they have no clue I'm going to kill myself tomorrow, you know? It's a crazy, crazy feeling to have. The night went on regularly, laughed, joked, whatever. Said prayers with the kids, put them to bed. Good night to the wife. We went to bed. As I'm sleeping, all of a sudden I'm in hell. Now when I say hell, I mean I mean this cave. The cave is humongous. I can't even describe it. You know, over to my left, there's like a, a two mile wide crater with orange, like yellowish, reddish flames coming up and the screams are millions at the same time and the thought that hit my head was like that's where Hitler's at that's where the major people who are leading a lot of people to death are you know or did have or whatever or where they will be going and where I was was up on this ledge and there was two like um entrance like cave entrances there you know what I'm saying I didn't go into them but I could see them and uh, I had a demon there was demons all over and there was people just screaming all over and a demon would grab my right arm and pull and would rip my arm off where I would my whole arm would come off and I'd see the skin hanging and the veins and the blood and you know the first two or three times you see that you're, you're still used to thinking how we do on Earth, and on Earth we're like, oh no, what panic. But there, it's different. So, you're shocked. But, he pulled it off and 
couple of seconds later, it would be back on again, and he would do the same thing all over again, and he'd be holding my arm, looking at me, laughing, because he just wants to see the fear, the fright on my face. So, in front of me stood this, the only way I can describe it is a monster. I'm talking like four foot wide, huge shoulders. Um, like Sully off of uh, Monsters, Inc., if you ever seen that. Yeah, that was a cool movie, you know, but this guy was like evil, huge, big like that, huge. Um, like knives, you know, huge claws, huge. And these things, he would, he would just go like this, wham, and come off from this side. And when he'd hit me, he'd just rip my stomach to shreds and my whole insides would fall on the ground at a cave. And I'd look down and, you know, once again, you're shocked. How's this happening? You know, can't, if it happens here, we're dead. But there, by the time he'd pull his hand back again, I was healed. And he would do it all over again, and he'd laugh at me. So the whole thing there, they wanted to laugh. They wanted to see your fear. They wanted to torture you. And they were content to do this forever. You absolutely knew that in your heart as you are there. And even with the smells, and even with the screams, the panic, the chaos, constantly, the chaos for me was the separation from God, knowing that I can't, I can pray all I want, I can't get my prayers up to Him. It's over, you know. It's like grabbing a rubber ball trying to throw it through the ceiling. It's not going to happen, you know. And for, I realized instantly that if, as long as you're living, as long as you're breathing and walking on this earth, I don't care if you're atheist, I don't care what you are, new age and this and that. Wake up, because as long as you're breathing, you have a shot to pray to Jesus, to drop to your knees, to ask God to come into your life, to save your life, and to turn your life over to God. And you can do that as long as you're breathing. Once you breathe your last breath, the dishes are done. Whatever you've accumulated to that point will be what happens. And a lot of people say, well, my God isn't a, isn't a, um, he's a loving God. And, and there is no hell, and he wouldn't put you in hell, and he wouldn't do this and that. Let me tell you something. That's all nice and everything, and you can keep that where you keep it. But hell is real. And you know who put yourself in hell? You. Because you're showing how you lived. You see everything you've ever done. And why, as you know, as you see, you, you judge yourself. Well, I, I wasn't this good. I did this. I did that. He has a law for us to follow. And if you don't follow it, you're going to be in hell. I try my best today to give glory to God because I'm so scared of that place. But I'm very scared for the people who don't believe in it because it is so frightening. I'm sure that other people who have had these experiences felt different things in hell. Myself, all I felt was the separation from God. Not one other thing bothered me as far, you know what I'm saying, like nothing else could ever overtake that pain and I couldn't believe that I was stuck here for eternity to be tortured I squandered everything and it had brought me to this point for eternity and on one of the journeys into hell he took me to the belly of hell and the belly of hell was 17 miles high three miles around there was like a um, stacked on top of each other jail cells and you could see skeletons inside there burning and screaming and crying and inside this place were souls of witches warlocks uh, demonic powers people that use demonic powers to destroy people and also the ones that served idolatry and they would actually, there was a dirt ledge in front, like four feet around, and Christ would speak and we would run, not run, we would move up by his power, you know, because God has all power. And we would go from level to level and Christ would talk to him. And he came to this one man that was burning, he was screaming, he was on his knees. The Lord said he was on the earth, he was blind. He's blind in hell. Said he used his handicap to seduce many for witchcraft. I said, how did he do that, Lord? Because I didn't know. He said, child, what he did, 
he would uh, he would work curses on them, and he would tell them, give them money for his handicap and things. And all the time, he's doing his witchcraft on these people, like young people, a lot of young people, he said, teenagers and things, and they didn't know because they had compassion on him. And he said, these things are true. He said, he, he did his witchcraft, and the man heard him, and he said, yes, I did, and I heard the gospel many times, but rejected you. He said, I never understood the sorrows of hell. He said, I served the devil on the earth. And when I died, this has been my torment. I've been here for years and years, wishing I had listened to the gospel. Wishing I had uh, told the truth. Wishing, I'm sorry, been told the truth so I could escape this place of damnation. So this is what I learned. Even people in the occult, they come to my services they think they're going to do harm to us and God turns it around and saves them by many, many. Because they think that they're going to have a kingdom when they go to hell. They don't have a kingdom. The devil says, do you think that I uh, would give you a kingdom, share my kingdom with you? The devil tells them, I hate you as much as Christians. And there they're burning in hell. But as Christ and I went on our journey night after night, what I learned, he talked about his blood in hell, that if they had received him, no matter what they did, he would have washed them clean by his power and his blood. Because when he was crucified, that's why he did that, to save us from eternal damnation. If we would believe he was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then I learned something. As I'm walking with him and talking with him, I learned out of the book of Galatians, there's 17 works of our flesh. He took and he showed me a valley full of murderers. They had died on the earth. They were, their main thing they did in their life was to murder people. They had to be millions. And I began to look at a vast number. They were skeletons chained together. And they were burning and screaming. And then he said, I want to show you people that have hate in their heart. He showed me a valley without number. And these were also uh, chained together, burning and screaming. And demons walking through torment them. And some of them were literally pulled apart and taken all over hell and they were screaming. Each part of the body was screaming. And I thought, oh my God, what a torment. And then um, he showed me like people in the cult, like I told you, in, in the center of hell. He showed me the murderers, he showed me the haters, he showed me the ones that are prejudiced. This is a subject that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but God does not see color. Listen, love knows no color of our skin. And what you have to do is love you one another as Christ loved us. And we have to watch what we say because that brings roots of bitterness and hatefulness. And in hell, there was a section for people like that. There was a section in hell for the hypocrites. They were in the heart of hell. It was a heart of hell as big as a football field. And around the base of it was sewers from the earth that run around it. The stink was beyond your belief. And in the midst of this is rats. Rats big as uh, 70 pounds. They're real, they're not a spirit. And they bite on these souls. The torment of things you, you just don't understand because it's hidden from you. But as you look at this and as you listen and you understand the knowledge that's been hid from us, revelation knowledge God wants us to see and know these things so we do not go to hell God wants us to have a, a, a knowledge and wisdom of what's down in the middle of the earth and when God begins to show somebody these things it's earth shaking and then I walked a little further with the Lord and I was crying in the spirit and I, and I was in the spirit but there was no tears and I saw a river flowing of fire and blood
and skeletons chained together with a big black chain. And the cries of the dead was echoing through the chambers of hell. And then you could hear the cries and the regrets and the moans and the screams of people wishing they'd listen to a preacher, wishing they'd listen to somebody, a woman, a man, a child, to tell them to repent of their sin. And the Lord walked me over to the river and said, look. And in the air, in the flames, was big black letters out of the book of Romans. And it said, lovers of their own flesh more than God's command. Men loving men, women loving women with no fear of God. It was the word of God written in the fires. And I looked and I said, Jesus. And I heard a man's voice scream, why wasn't I warned? Why didn't somebody tell me? way at the end of the line was it was like thousand one thousand people in front of me and there was a shadow a great big shadow but it had no detail it was like a, as a vapor and I could I could see that it was a shadow of something that was in the front and um I you know I had many questions at this point in this dream and out of nowhere I, I hear I heard these words the part for me and this galaxy this portal, I don't know what to call it. On the on on the right side of of God, you know, uh, or Jesus Christ, you know, whoever you, you you decide to identify that spot of judgment. On the right side of Him, there was this big portal that opened up, and there will be stones of fire. Hey, normally, when you you get a lighter and you put it on, try to uh, spark a flame, but instead of fire, it was stones. And they will leak out of this portal. And whoever, whoever that guy said, the pop me flew down this place. And it was the flames, the, the stones were so hot that it would burn everybody outside of that portal. On the left side of our, our body or our form, it would burn us. And even everybody like, woo! Like and it, was, it was so cold or so hot, you would tell somebody to close that door. It's too cold. That's how hot it was. And the, the portal closed. And then the, he, he sent me so fast that the screams were late. I would hear, ah, like it was like the part of me. And it closed up. Then the screams come, ah, and it terrified me. And then out of nowhere, something snatched us up. And like we moved up the line. And I began to think, I, I didn't understand where we was. I'm like, oh my God, maybe this is judgment. Yeah, my, you know, I had many questions, and I would hear, depart me, shoo, boo, depart me, shoo, boo, depart me, shoo, boo, and all these different people would be sent to hell. And the part that scared me the most was the people that were getting judged, you could hear when God was talking to them, and you could hear everything they got judged from. So if somebody went to hell for something that you knew you struggled with in your life, you knew where you were going. And so, I'm just saying people go, shoot, sit there, boo, boo. But I, I'm seeing the flame and it's just constantly burning everybody outside that haven't been judged yet. And I could hear some of the people um, talking to God and um, I remember there was a woman, you know, blonde hair, and God was talking to her. He said, I'm not judging you for what you put on Facebook, but I'm judging you 
on how everybody else received it. 300,000 people were led astray by one of her Facebook posts. And he said their blood was on her hands. And I don't know what he said, the ball for me. And I'm talking about, I couldn't express how powerful his words were. It's as if he said, the ball for me and everything shook. And she like, she was sitting with great force. And the port opened up, boom. She was going fly, and it would close. And like, ah, and the screams were so late, it terrified me. People, uh, adultery, uh, 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 fornication, uh, so many different things that I could actually hear. And people in front of me were terrified because a, a lot of those people were struggling or went through the same situation and they never repented. So I, thousand, one thousand, sent here, sent here. They would go, they were flying, they was flying so fast. I've never seen something so fast. And it got to the point where I was next in line. And he called me up. And he started talking to me. And keep in mind that our life held, held us hand to hand. So anything we did in our life, our, our life testified against us. So you couldn't lie because your life testified. Say, yes, you did. You did this. You did this at this time. Yes, you did. And whenever God would speak to me, you would see a big screen. Like you would see as if whatever God says, it comes to life. Yeah, I, I thought, Lord, why did you send me to that horrible yeah. place? He said, because many people do not believe hell is real. He said, even some of my own people do not believe hell exists. Which that statement surprised me because I thought all Christians believe in hell, oh. but many of them do not. Sure. They believe in annihilationism or universalism or soul sleep. None of that's true. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 46, that these shall go into everlasting life and these shall go into everlasting punishment. He used the same word everlasting, Ionios. So just as heaven is everlasting, so is hell. But it's a, it's a place. I mean, the only Christians think it's not a place. It's, it's a, a real state. geographical location. I understood I was down deep in the earth. I understood there were different levels of torment and degrees of punishment. Remember Jesus said, you shall receive the greater mm -hmm. damnation, mm -hmm. inferring there's a lesser. But the point is, there is no comfortable level in hell. They're all horrendous beyond anything you can why imagine. Why were they there? Did you find out why the, the Lord sent these people to hell or they went to hell? They went to hell because they denied Jesus as their personal savior. Yes. They had the choice in life and they rejected him. Even though God offered himself to people throughout their whole lives, mm -hmm. uh, people on their own, they re reject. The only way is knowing Jesus Christ and repenting of your sins. And if you don't do that, you will end up in this place. And I don't care what you're raised with. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you will end up in this place for all eternity. That's horrible to contemplate. It is. It's horrible. It is the most horrible thing. That's why God wants us as Christians to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want anyone to go to this place. He wept when he saw people falling back in this tunnel that we came out of. Uh, it hurts him to see people going into hell. But again, because he loves man, he gives him that choice. He tells you clearly how to stay out of there. Yeah. You know, in Revelation 21, 8 says, all unbelievers shall have their part in the lake of fire. So he tells you, if you don't believe my word, you'll end up there. So it's their own words that condemn them and send them there. The people really need to know this. They need to know that there is no coming out of that place. And they need to know that on the day of judgment in the book of Revelations, God shall speak and death and hell shall come up in the universe. They don't go into heaven. That's in Revelation chapter 20. And there, when the books of life are open, those people in hell, their books was never washed in the blood of the Lamb. And that's what it's all about. We have a book of our life in heaven that right now, if you're not born again and you're not saved, what happens? They keep recording your bad deeds. You just know that. But when you get born again on the earth and that blood washes you clean, that record's taken to heaven by angels. And then it's recorded in, in your book. But all these old things here, angels blot out all your sins and all your old transgressions. It's a Bible. It said, I even, he, I, even I am he that blotteth out all your old transgressions. And then these pages become crimson red. And then they take your book and they record in your book the minute you got saved, the sermon you heard, they record everything that God did. And they close the book up and they take this before the book, of the throne of God. Let me ask you a question though. Uh, there was a rich man who said, how about sending somebody back to tell my brothers and 
Abraham said, they've got Moses and the prophets. If they won't believe them, they won't believe though somebody rose from the dead. But folks, do you believe what's been said? It's in the Bible over and over again. People have been there. They've seen it, and they've come to warn you and to say, you don't want to do it. But, I mean, it's more horrible than I could conceive of. The, the, the thought that there's never an end to it, that, you know, forever and ever, the lake of fire forever and ever and ever is what the Bible says. No end. You, you got a body that can't die. You want to die, and you can't die. Now, let me ask you this. I'm offering you right now a way to get out of this so that when you die, you will not go to hell. You will go to heaven. You will be in paradise with Jesus. He said about the thief on the cross, this day you will be with me in paradise. Not you will be with me in hell, but you will be with me in paradise. Because he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He believed that Jesus was Lord. Jesus died. This is real. This isn't some churchy thing you do in a Baptist church somewhere. This is real. This is for real. It's not, it's not play games. It's not children's Bible stories. It's real. And it's horrible. But the salvation is beyond measure. And he offers it to you right now. Will you choose life? Will you choose life as God is speaking to you right now? Some of you say, yes, don't wait another minute. So I'm going to take a chance. I'm still living a pretty good life. I'm going to have some parties. No. <clears throat> you don't know when your life's going to end. You don't know. You don't know. It could end like that. Boom. Today. Right this second. I don't want that to happen. Do you want to spend eternity with the Lord? Why don't you ask him right now? If you believe in him. He that hears my word and believes on him that sends me, has eternal life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. That's what Jesus said. Do you want that? I want you to bow your head right now, wherever you are. Right now, do it. Families, do it. Husbands and wife, you don't want to be by yourself. Husbands and wife. Pray these words, pray them silently, pray them out loud, whatever. Lord Jesus Christ, pray that with me. Lord Jesus Christ. I know you died to take upon yourself the penalty for all the sin that I have ever committed. And right now, I confess that I believe that you died for me according to the scriptures. And so I ask you, come into my heart. Take over my life. Live your life for me and in me. And from this moment on, Lord, I am yours. Thank you that you've heard my prayer, and thank you that you've come into my heart. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to pray for you. For those who pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, fill them with the power of God right now, and may they see the glory of the Lord from this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen.